Hello and welcome, Chef Pennington here. Today we are doing the ultimate Instapot rib test. We are gonna test out using a lot of liquid versus a little liquid, membrane on versus membrane off. Now I certainly understand the whole thought about the membrane. I'm a barbecue guy from Texas, you take the membrane off, right? Well, I'm gonna show you a way where you can actually leave it on and it not be chewy. You will never know it was there. I know it sounds crazy, but I promise you guys you're gonna see. So let's do this here. We've got some spare ribs. Now you can buy these already cut like this into the St. Louis cut, but sometimes they come with this shelf on the outside. It's kind of like a little curve part, an extension of the rib. And if you go right down the that outside cap, you can shape it up yourself. So something you might want to do. So I'm just counting there, trying to figure out roughly where the middle is. We're going to cut this in half and we're going to do the same thing to some baby back ribs and we're going to remove the membrane. So removing the membrane, there's a bunch of ways of doing it. I like grabbing like a spoon or something like that and using the back of it and getting near the bone and right on, not so much just the bone, but between the bone. So the bone and the edge where the meat is, and you wrestle with it for a little bit and then you get a paper towel and try to get a grip on it. If you just try to use your fingers, it's going to slip. It doesn't come off in a whole piece or anything close to it. So sometimes it comes off really nice and easy. Other times it fights with you a little bit. And then you'll get to a point like this where you'll just get a hold and there it goes. Pretty easy. So as far as the softening the membrane, look at that thing. It looks tougher than nails and, you know, it doesn't look appetizing. I think we all agree to that. But sometimes cooking an Instapot, especially ribs, they can want to fall apart. So like I said, we're going to look at all the different aspects. So this is like the ultimate test. So we got some baby backs here. I really like baby backs. And what's really interesting, you can see that's a meaty rack of ribs compared to the spare ribs. But everyone talks about spare ribs being a more meaty rib. So it's a little interesting there. Like, I think both cases can be true. It just depends on the pig. But this test is membrane off, which is what most of us are wanting to do, logic says. So quick dry rub. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a dry rub. We're going to rub down our ribs, and it's going to go in the refrigerator. And you're going to let it set up. Overnight will be best. Uh, nothing wrong with doing that. It just brings more flavor to the party. If, if you're in a pinch, you know, you could just season them up, let them sit for 10 minutes, and let it go. So it's completely up to you. Terminado sugar, you'll see that in a lot of barbecue dry rubs. It's better than just using brown sugar or sugar. It's actually real raw cane sugar. And it has a nicer texture than using brown sugar, which is really just normal sugar that has molasses added to it. So something special like turbinado sugar. Put that on your shopping list. I'll have a link below. You guys can check that out. Also for Himalayan sea salt, which is like the healthiest stuff ever. I'm super excited about it these days. It has over 50 elements from the periodic table which means it's full of stuff and stuff your body wants. So Herbs de Provence, it's like rosemary, thyme, marjoram, all those kind of good Italian flavors. So this is not a really far out there, if you will, dry rub. It's fairly simple, but they are key components that you definitely would like to see in a dry rub. And feel free to do whatever you guys think. I really like making dry rubs. I've got a special one of my own that I'm gonna give you guys. If you guys sign up for my newsletter, but it's the links below you guys will get access to my personal dry rub, which is more like 16 different ingredients. And it's taken me a while to develop it. I think you guys will enjoy it. So go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. I send out good stuff and I'm not a spam or anything like that. I just send out quality, you know, I'm a chef. So I'm trying to make quality stuff, you guys, creative. So my newsletter, I don't know, it's just not, it's food stuff. <laughs> so sign up guys. So here we go. We're rubbing them down. Put a little bit of honey. The honey helps it stick. If you guys are more of the kind mindset, you like to use mustard. I'm not that guy, but a lot of people over y'all over there on the East Coast, you love using mustard before putting your dry rub on. So, you know, you might go that route. So I'm using orange juice. We're using one frozen can, and then we're going to add one can of water. And that's all the liquid we're going to add to it. You guys could use apple juice too. I'm a fan of that. I've got another video here on YouTube which I'll put in the link below also, where we're doing Instapot ribs, baby back style fall off the bone. So it's the absolute fall off the bone test. You guys might want to check that out. So we're going to use a pressure cooker setting, meat, and we're going to set it for 35 minutes. Or are we going for 40 minutes? Nah, 35. <laughs> which is a reasonable amount of time to cook them. We want them to have a chance to get tender. Some people go for like this 15, 20 minute thing. I don't understand that, but everyone's a little different and that's cool. So we're doing 35 minutes. You're going to see what that looks like here in just a short bit. We're going to glaze our ribs after we cook them so that we can stick them in the oven, give them a little caramelization and some more flavor. 
so that they're delicious. So this is some of my dry rub right there, guys. This is what it looks like. Just putting two tablespoons in there. So we're reinforcing the flavors that we put onto the dry rub. Apple cider vinegar. Got to put it in a dry rub. I'm sorry, in a barbecue sauce. And then just a little bit of brown sugar. So fairly simple, but it's barbecue sauce. And it's a lot cheaper making it yourself. Not like barbecue cost, sauce costs a lot, but it's cool to make your own. That little drop right there, guys, that little pin, that is what you're looking for. That's how you know that it's safe to open the Instant Pot. Once that little pin drops, you're good. So we went for 35 minutes here. You can see that they're definitely cooked. They have not fallen off the bone. We did remove the membrane. So that's something to think about. This is a very good way to do an Instant Pot rib but we're going to do more, which is going to be the fun part. We're going to see a way to make them way more tender and absolutely fall off the bone, which those were not. Those were very good ribs, but we're going to do them even better. So we're going to add more water. That's the, the first thing we're going to do different here. And then extra water is going to be like, we're going to be more or less kind of braising them under pressure, which is a very cool idea if you think about it. It's like roasting in a way. <laughs> we're pressurized cooking with a lot of liquid instead of just a normal braise and liquid which is low and slow and takes forever so this is cool this is something i think a lot of people aren't doing when it comes to ribs and the instapot so we're going to cook this longer because we're braising it we're giving it that chance if you went 35 minutes with the other test i think the ribs would be probably pretty great and that might be worth testing out itself so it takes longer than 45 minutes because it has to the, the little instapot has to pressurize but you guys are going to see here, these are some juicy, juicy ribs. Those are the spare ribs right there. And here comes the baby backs. And these do have the membrane on, which is also different. So you guys are going to see all of this. At the very end of the video, you're going to see where I'm going to cut into all this, and you're going to get a really good look at each of the different sections. But this is what we're talking about when we talk about fall off the bone, guys. That's fall off the bone. So finishing the ribs, get them onto a roasting rack. Don't have to use a roasting rag, but that little extra convection underneath helps. It's nice. And plus, it won't just sit there on the tray and get, you know, potentially soggy or something like that. And we're only going to cook it for like three to four minutes under the broiler. So paint it on. You could do the bottom side too. I don't usually do that with spot ribs because they're usually fragile. I think it's a little weird. But some fresh cra cracked black pepper, a little fresh element. I really like that. It's about three minutes just to the point where it wants to take on a little bit of color. And that's what you're looking for. And you can see it looks like some barbecue ribs, which is cool. We did it in the house. So let's take a look here. So this was with the membrane off. 35 minutes, baby backs. You can see that's a good rib. If you bit into it, you could put teeth marks into it. So if you're more of a textural eater and you want a little tougher rib, maybe the less water is the way for you to go. Here's high water membrane on still. You can see the membrane is not there to really mess with you which is really kind of interesting that we can cook it with the membrane on and the membrane under pressure kind of disappears which goes against conventional thinking i know but it works i think every one of these ways actually turned out pretty doggone good and what's fun about this video is you can truly see it there's another membrane on 45 minutes i like that higher water liquid cooking method because it creates a more moist rib i'm convinced of that for real for me but here's our final notes longer cook times with more liquid more tender rib totally believe that guys so membrane on only, only works with the more liquid and the longer cook time so it has time for that pressure to destroy it if you will get rid of the membrane membrane off longer cook times ribs fall apart something to think about so you could section them and cut them into like ribs of two or three come join us on social media we'd love to have you go ahead and subscribe while you guys are here there'll be a link below for all of that there'll be a recipe card more instructions and pictures and all that in a link below and thank you so much for watching guys